Visit sailright.com for all your project supplies, tools, and instructions. I'm Seth Grant with Sailrite, and in this tutorial video, we're going to show you how to make this dock line chafing pad using materials from Sailrite. We demonstrate how to make these dock line chafing pads from a vinyl channeling fabric from Sailrite. And on the back side is a material called Super Grip. It truly grips the surface it is protecting. Let's get started and show you how to do it. The first step is to cut our channeling and our Super Grip to size. To determine the size of our dock line chafing pad, we're going to measure right here on the edge of the boat, and we want it to be about two to three inches outside of the line so we have excess so it doesn't rub right here. So we're going to make ours 21 inches. And for the height, we want it to come down, uh, let's see, it's going to be about two inches up above the cleat, so we want it to come down to about, probably about 15 inches, so right about there. So now we'll measure our cleat and it's about a little less than 10 inches, but we're gonna make our hole about three, roughly three quarters the size of the cleat. And the, uh, the width of that hole, our, uh, our cleat's about two inches, so we'll probably make it about two and a half so it fits through there easily. We're using a channeling fabric from Sailrite. Sailrite stocks a wide variety of channeling fabrics that'd be great for this project. We're going to make sure we strike our line along the edge of the where the channels start right here so we can use as little fabric as possible. So we're going to cut our piece to 22 and a half by 16 and a half and we want our finished size to be approximately 21 and a half by 15 and a half. We have the channels going across this way and we want to make sure we strike our line parallel with the channels. And now we can just cut it out with a pair of scissors. We prefer the pleats to run parallel to the short side, but that's not a rule. For the underside of our chafing pad, we're using the Super Grip Non-Slip Cushion Underlining. It sticks to surfaces amazingly well, so it won't slip at all. We have the bottom side of our, our uh, Super Grip up. If you were marking it, you'd want to mark it on the bottom side so that it's on the inside of your chafing pad. But we're just going to line it up to the corners up here and then cut it out with a pair of scissors. The super grip is cut to the exact same size as the channeling fabric. We'll be sewing the channeling to the super grip in an envelope style where there's an opening so we can pull it through right side out. So we have the outside surface of our super grip facing up and we are going to take our channeling fabric with the outside surface and have the outside surfaces facing one another and line them up at the corners. And then we're going to sew from down here up all the way around, back down to here, leaving an opening of about 13, 14 inches. To make the sewing a little easier, we're going to flip it over and we're going to pin all four corners inside of our half inch seam allowance. So when, while pinning, we want to think about the direction we're sewing. So we're going to be sewing this way. So we want all the pins to be facing towards the foot of the sewing machine so they can easily be removed. Want to secure the assembly a little bit better? Well, insert a pin in the middle position all around the perimeter. That's your choice. We're gonna reduce our stitch length to about four millimeters in forward and reverse. And then we're gonna take our magnetic sewing guide and put it on the half inch mark on the sewing machine plate. So we'll start sewing right here, leaving enough space for our gap in the center. We'll make sure our foot is lowered and we'll do some reversing right here at the beginning. and make sure the edge is up against that magnetic sewing guide. Sew up to the uh, pin, remove the pin. Sew about a half inch from the corner, making sure we bury our needle about a half inch on the way up. And then we'll lift our foot, rotate our material over, lower the foot and continue to sew. We will only show rounding one corner. Let's skip ahead to the point where we began sewing to leave that opening. Remember we want to leave that gap in the center, so we'll sew up here a little bit, and then we're going to do some reversing here at the end. This leaves an opening for the envelope so you can turn it right side out. To cut down on the bulk of the half inch seam allowance, we're going to trim around the perimeter. Okay, we're going to use the clear acrylic ruler and we're going to line it up with our stitch line here and strike a line straight across. Seth is striking a line directly across from the stitch line for the opening of the envelope. Now we're going to take our scissors and we are going to trim off all this excess, leaving just a little bit of fabric 
between our stitch and our cut. The line is a reference so that the trimming can be done consistently around the perimeter. Now we're going to put quarter inch basting tape along our opening here so that when we turn it right side out, it's easy for us to close up the rest of our shave pad. And then I'll also do the same thing on this side as well. The double-sided tape can be helpful, but it's not totally necessary. You could use clips, which we will use later on. And now we're going to turn it right side out. We're going to want to put our hands in there and push out each one of the corners as best we can. If you can't get it to look like this using your fingers, you're going to want to use a screwdriver to uh, push that corner out. So now that we have it right side out, we are going to remove our transfer paper and we are going to fold this over. So now, we, now that we've removed our transfer paper, we're going to create a quarter inch hem along this opening to uh, finish sealing our chafing pad. The size of the hem here is not important. What is important is that it lines up, or the fold I should say, lines up with the stitch that was created on the left side and the right side. Now that we have our uh, super grip basted at a quarter inch, we're going to baste our channeling fabric at a quarter inch, and then we're gonna have to clip these in place, otherwise they will not stay together. So once we get it together like that, take a clip, and we wanna clip it so that the white side is the upside. So notice the flat part of the clip is down because this is the side we're going to sew on. Okay, and we'll clip it all the way down. Probably use four or five clips for this. From Seth's perspective, the white side is up, but actually that'll be the downside. The red side will be the upside when we take it to the sewing machine. Before we can do top stitching, we need to secure it all around the perimeter, which makes the job easier. So now we're going to clip it all the way around the perimeter and we want to lift it up and make sure that our super grip is on the bottom side so that when we add our top stitch, it's not visible from the top side. So I'm going to just clip it all the way around. These small fabric and leather clips can be bought a la carte or they come in the bag making package for the ultra feed. So we're gonna put our needle in the right position. We're gonna put our magnetic sewing guide onto the sewing machine, but you can't put it right next to it, otherwise you're going to hit the foot. So we're gonna put it just forward of it and just inside of a quarter of an inch. So now that our piece is all clipped in place, we're gonna sew a top stitch all the way around the perimeter and everyone is going to see this stitch. So we are going to turn our Worker Bee power pack all the way down to the slowest speed so we can uh, take it nice and slow. And we're going to start sewing up here at the corner. So I'll remove this first clip and we're gonna take our time with this because as I said it before, everyone will see this. We've chosen to place this stitch fairly close to the edge, but you can place it anywhere you want. Uh, it doesn't have to be a little bit less than a quarter inch from the edge. That's totally up to you. Okay, we're coming up on a corner and we're going to round this corner uh, with the shape of the corner. So when we come up to the corner here, we're going to come up right here and we're gonna bury our needle right there, lift our foot, rotate the material, and we're gonna follow the shape of the actual corner instead of just turning 90 degrees. So we'll bury our needle again, lift the foot, rotate our fabric, and now we're back on a straightaway and we'll repeat this process at all the corners. You want to make sure you lower your foot again before you uh, continue sewing. Because the channeling fabric is rather thick, the corners aren't perfectly square. Seth rounded the corners following the shape, but if you prefer to just simply bury your needle and make a 90 degree turn at each corner, that's totally up to you. Seth is evaluating where his needle is going to penetrate the fabric at the corner and he's using the link lever to position the needle at a different spot than what it would have done naturally. That's a good trick to know. As Seth continues to sew, when he gets close to each of the fabric and leather clips, he removes them one at a time. So we're coming up on the end here and we're going to sew down to that corner. 
So we're still going to use the same method for rounding our corners, but we want to make sure that we are hitting our previous stitch. So I'm going to put our foot down, so forward one stitch, lift our foot, and we're going to try to hit right onto our, old, our previous needle hole. There we go. And now it's time to sew and then cut the cleat opening. So our top stitch is now complete and we need to sew a uh, oval in our pad for our cleat. And then we're gonna cut that oval out so we have a hole for it. And our cleat is about 10 and a half inches. So we want roughly three quarters of the size of our cleat for our hole. So we're gonna turn it over and mark the backside. And since our pad's finished width is 21 inches, we will take 21 minus eight, which is 13, and then divide that by two, which is 6.5. So it's gonna be 6.5 inches from each edge. And that's where the start of our uh, circle is. I'll do it this way just because it's a little easier for me and you. So those are, that's the outside edges. And then we want it to be about one inch, oops, one inch from the top. So one inch right there. We're gonna use the bottom of a cone of thread for our rounded ends. And we found this to be about the perfect size for our cleat. But before we do that, we're gonna use the clear acrylic ruler and we're going to strike this line across so that we know where to line up our cone. So we'll strike it across and then we'll put the cone in between the line on the outside and the line we previously struck. And that's how we're gonna round this entire side. So we'll strike this rounded edge all the way around until it's a straightaway again, just like that. And we'll repeat that process over here on this end as well. Remember, not all cones have the same cores, and so the size of the bottom will be different. So you wanna make sure that you get one that matches with your cleat. And now we're just going to finish our oval. Okay, so we're going to sew around the perimeter of this. We're not gonna do any reversing at the beginning. So we'll just follow that line around the perimeter. Well, we'll wanna make sure that our fabric material is not getting caught on the throat of the sewing machine. So you might have to roll it up. And then we'll continue to sew and we'll show you uh, our back tacking when we get to the end. So now we're gonna sew, uh, we're gonna sew about three stitches in reverse. And there you go. So our final step is to cut out the uh, oval and we're gonna use a razor blade to do so. And we wanna cut really close to our stitches so it looks as good as possible. And you don't have to cut all the way through all the layers all at once. Uh, just starting with basically a line around the perimeter often uh, gives you better results. Our dock line chafe pad is now complete. Coming up next is the materials and tools that we used to make this chafe guard. Sayerite has a variety of channeling fabrics that will work great for these chafe guards. And we also have the tools that are required so you can make them yourself. Be sure to subscribe to the Sayerite YouTube channel and click the bell to be notified of new tutorial videos when they become available. I'm Eric Grant and from all of us here at Sayerite, thanks for watching.